This is Cursed Earth Radio. Hello, perps, punks, and prehistoric satanic creatures wandering out there in the wasteland. You're listening to Cursed Earth Radio, the one and only broadcast bringing dread to the dreadless. Broadcasting outside the walls of Mega City One across the Atlantic in North America. This is Cool Johnny Cool. And this is Heavy Metal Kid, and today we're going to switch it up and bring some death to the deathless. We're talking about the origin of the Dark Judges and also the origin of Judge Anderson. Brought to us by John Wagner and Brian Bolin, we're going to find out that life itself is a crime and the sentence is death. We're taking a look at Judge Death and Judge Death Lives on Cursed Earth Radio. Keep listening, creeps. So today we're looking at the origin story of death and also the origin story of one of 2000 AD's sort of top tier characters. Easily my my favorite judge who is not Judge Dredd. Really? Yeah. Judge Anderson for you is above Judge Giant? (sighs) Why you... Why? Judge Giant's fucking cool. I love Judge Giant, but Judge Giant can't trap Judge Death in his head. Judge Dredd is He-Man, Judge Anderson is She-Ra. That's how important Judge Anderson is. Right, yeah. And this is also the first time we learn about side vision Yeah. Birth of a lot of cool things here. A lot of ideas Mm -hmm. come out in this prog. The interesting thing, though, is the stories themselves are kind of short. Yeah. um, The first one's only 15 pages. It's really short comparatively to a lot of the stuff we've already covered. But it's one of the most legendary progs in all of Dread. I, I kind of wondered as I was reading these again for the... I don't know how many times I've read these. But when I, I was reading through these, they, they're kind of basic. Yeah. You know, it's like they resolve everything real quick. It's like, here's the threat. Uh, the threat is vanquished. End of the story. You know, these real quick sort of throwaway kind of stories with some really awesome characters that emerged. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think they knew what they had when they wrote this. We definitely could have done this in our short progs episode because it is it is super short. Even Judge Death Lives is really short. They're like, um, I'd liken them to the old Universal horror movies like Dracula or Frankenstein. Um, they were always pretty short. I mean, I guess yeah. for the time, 60 Minutes was a long movie, but they're always really succinctly wrapped up in that last five minutes and we're done. And, and I would definitely agree with you. They, I don't think they really knew what they had. And I also think it's a, a good example of you know, coming up with a character that could have easily been a throwaway character, but adding Brian Bolland's artwork oh my God, yeah. and that character design, you know, I think that's what really preserved the character is that people saw that image. It's so striking. And all of a sudden, they want more. And... It, if you look at all the weird stuff that has happened up to now in 2080, and this was originally published from January 26, 1980 to February 9th, 1980. Uh, really quick run. So we're I, what years deep now, and we've encountered a lot of strange stuff. This is by far the strangest thing that had, had happened up to this point for Dread. Was this pre-Mexican Birdman? Yeah. This is pre Mexican okay. Birdman. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess so yeah, so. this is yeah, this is one I, I would contend the strangest thing to happen in Mega City One up to this point. This is honestly when I start um, trying to get people into 2080 and Dread, I usually point them in the direction of the second story that we're talking about, which is like Judge Death Returns. Yeah. I always say, you know, if you're interested in yeah, the first, you know, Judge Death is a cool enough story, but I always tell people, like, it's a little it's a little goofy, mm-hmm. and you don't get the full power of Judge Death and those other characters, well, especially of the other Dark Judges, until you go to the second story. So if I'm going to recommend a story, I usually recommend that people start with the second one, because in a way, the uh, second one just catches you up really quickly and you're good. Yeah, and um, no pun intended, it's more fleshed out. Um, <laughs> absolutely no pun intended, but yeah, it's... Uh, the first one, while cool, was kind of bereft of details. Yeah, you just get the cool idea, but you also have the emergence of two really, really, you know, heavy hitters in the 2080 universe. Yeah. So I, I guess we can go ahead and get into it. 
So we're, we're looking at Judge Death. This was originally published in Progs 149 to 151. Uh, I, HMK's got, we well, got case files over there? Yeah, I got the case files. And I am, I have my trusty The Law of Dread from Quality Comics. So if you're reading at home, it's issue one in Quality Comics. Nobody's reading Quality Comics I am reading Quality <laughs> Comics. And, but you wish you were, because why? Oh, it's in color. Yeah, yeah, I got colorized and you got the black and white. Well, we have a few colorized <laughs> versions, right? Yes. Yeah. So what we have here, not that anybody cares, is we have the Quality Comics, which is really nicely colored. Mm -hmm. It's got that vintage look to it and then we have the idw recolor and i'll be honest there are some things about this one that i don't like which is uh that fire's color seems to change in between yeah. the panels interesting note in my uh quality comics version anderson is a redhead uh i don't know if that was a choice or just by 2080 or if the colorist just went she's a redhead now yeah, I, I I like Anderson as a redhead, but, do but she is not a redhead. In, uh, in, in this prog and in my dream, she is. Uh, <laughs> um, and then, I, of course, I'm reading on the... Uh, I'm at, you're, you're back in the 90s, and I'm here in the digital age reading on my yeah, tablet. Yeah, but mine's in color, so... That's true. Um, so, <laughs> Judge Death uh, starts out um, with uh, a silhouette of a judge in darkness, as seen by this guy, Tiny the Tap. Yeah. He thinks he's he's obviously committed some kind of crime. He's yeah. done something. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's, the, he's the, main, on, the main crime is life. Well, but. yeah, we'll find that out here in a minute. Yeah, uh, he's obviously on the lam, and he, he thinks he's ditched the judges, but then he sees this this silhouette, which looks like a judge at first. And then when we were talking about how quick this story goes, there's really no buildup. It's like here's Tiny the Tap. He sees a silhouette, and by the third mm -hmm. panel, there's Judge Death, full on, full on Judge Death, uh, standing and uh, pretty such much a, such a good image. Yeah, that, such a good image, and and that image is probably what kept this character alive for. Because let's just pretend for a minute that Judge Death is you know some guy wearing a Grim Reaper cloak mm -hmm. with a some shitty skull mask. I'm thinking of like some of those Batman villains that they yeah. had. What was the guy? <clears throat> oh, the skull and the sickle. yeah. I know who you're talking about. He's in full circle. You know if if. If he had looked differently, I think uh, he may not have survived as long because there's not much on the story front other than a cool idea. But I, I uh, wonder who designed him. I don't. I don't know if that was Boland. I'm gonna guess it was Boland. Can you imagine how different, much different, the history of Dread would be if somebody else did this? Yeah. A completely different visual take. It could have been another artist. It could have been a completely different death. Yeah. And, and knowing just what I've read about how uh, John Wagner tends to write these things, uh, he leaves a lot of, you know, he, he seems to me like he fully believes that it's the artist's job to kind of handle that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it's quite possible that uh, Brian Boland was the mastermind behind the look of these characters, and thank God, because if they would have been cheesy, yeah, they wouldn't have stuck It could have easily gone that route, too. Yeah. And i got to point out here... Uh, Satan's breath, your face, Tiny the Tap exclaims as he's confronted with the visage of Judge Dread or Judge Death, fully revealed from his shadow. And uh, this is it. Basically, he, he tried to uh, fight Judge Death. We don't really see that, other than that Death reaches through him, which we find out is, is Death's kind of thing. He'll just reach his hand right through you and stop your heart. I'm assuming. Yeah, no, no blood or anything. He actually just physically. Uh, phases through and in and grabs your what I'm assuming grabs your heart like in um, the Frighteners and just squeezes it yeah. until you're done and so on the very first page Tiny the Tap is is done away with by uh, Judge Death and he's walking the streets while while Death is out walking the streets enjoying the nightlife and deciding who he's going to kill the judges are on the case and they're trying to figure out what the fuck killed Tiny the Tap because he has this horrible you know, scowl on his face. Yeah, he, he has Rick. His face is just torn in a mask of fear and yeah. terror. They can't find any evidence other than some dead flesh beneath Tiny the Tap's fingernails. Dead like centuries. Yeah, not a month, not a week, like hundreds and hundreds of years. I did notice this, and I don't think I've seen this in any other frogs. Instead of saying Drock, he says Doc. Does that happen? Yeah, all? it's repetitively. So I don't know if they were field testing a new thing and it didn't stick and they just went back to Drock. I'm sure somebody out there can quote me on that or correct me on that. But Does does Drock appear before this? It has to, right? Yeah, it's like from Jump Street, I think. Huh. We're going to have to research. The history of uh, Drock. <laughs> the next the next broadcast is all going to be about Drock. 
So yeah, they, they find out that the skin that's under a tiny detached fingernails is has been dead for centuries. And here we are again with 2080 and weird helmets. Look at the tech judge's helmet. Just <laughs> look what he's what he has to wear to work. Yeah. It's terrible. It look it actually looks like a fighter pilot, like the old leather fighter pilot helmet. It looks like the liner from the inside of a football. He didn't like get the whole helmet. He gets yeah. the liner. And he's just got some bifocals. Yeah. <laughs> Tech judge does not get to dress cool. Uh, meanwhile, uh, speaking of people who dress cool, Death is taking a walk through uh, the rabbit hatch, and I get what looks to me to be like a nightclub, yeah. sex club, night and, sex. Uh, and he 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 sees this DJ playing like doo wop music. Like it's got to be some futuristic mega city doo wop. And uh, he's called the man with the electric eyes. Yeah. Not not the electric. The electric. The, electric the sounds abound. And as he's DJing, um, apparently Death just hates anybody having fun and joy. So. And we know that Death is a metalhead, uh, based on some future comics. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's some right. I forgot about comics. that. Crossover comics. Yeah. So uh, what what he sees is people enjoying themselves, which and, in Mega City. You know, it's, it's a rare commodity. Yeah, I was gonna say. Let's say he, you know, would have spawned in another uh, block. He could have said, "Well, this is this is fine because they're so, they're as good as dead." Yeah. But these people are partying. And Way not. too much fun, and death is not about having fun. And he wants them all dead. So uh, he he sets about killing as many people as he can. Oh, the man with the electric eyes. The death panel is my just great. <laughs> it's so silly. Yeah, he, he reaches in and he squeezes him to death, just like everyone else. And again, this is super short, so we get just a few panels of him terrorizing the man with electric eyes, and we're to assume that he is judging the entirety of Mega City and starting with the people in the rabbit hatch, and that's pretty much it. The, the prog ends with him taking his vengeance on and, and beginning to judge these people, and at the very last page... The judges discover bodies strewn all over the the nightclub, and uh, and they try to take death out, unsuccessful. <laughs> yeah, well, death takes out one of the judges. Goes, he kills Ross. He karate chops Ross and goes right through him, and then they they just go uh, full auto, and they assume he's gonna die because they've never encountered something that hasn't died under a hail of uh, full auto from lawgivers. And then we, we get the first of his calling card, his signature lines. You cannot kill what does not live. As he drags himself up from being riddled with bullets, and they keep firing, and he's still up. This is the first time they've ever encountered something like this. And up until this point, we don't really know what Judge Death's mission is. I'm assuming most everyone who's listening to this probably knows what his deal is, but we don't know at this point. Is he here to kill one person? Is he here to kill all people? Is... is his mission, death at all, yeah, we assume that death is going to be <laughs> heavily a part of it yeah. based on how he looks. But he dressed uh, for the party. He hasn't he hasn't really revealed his uh, his true mission, which is or why he's on this mission to judge everyone in Mega City. Yeah, we get no backstory in this prog. Yeah, um, and I remember reading this the first time, and it was so unlike anything else I'd read up to that point because most of it was procedural crime, and you had some weirdos like the Angel Gang and. And Satanus and Cursed Earth hijinks. But this was the first time this real, like, a paranormal, supernatural thing happened. Because, like, Satanus was the byproduct of genetic engineering. Um, the Angel family is just the byproduct of the Cursed Earth. They're, they're a byproduct of their own type of genetic yes. engineering. <laughs> they should date outside their gene pool. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Judge Death is the first real paranormal entity we encounter in, in Mega City One. But even at this point you can you can get the sense that he really was kind of meant to be a monster of the week. Yeah, he definitely especially with the the, the length of the prog and the lack of actual backstory on him in this, he definitely feels like, you know, tune in next week when we'll have a new Yeah. So uh, what they hit him with incendiaries. Doesn't work. No. This is the first time we see what happens when the shell is damaged. And this becomes a recurring thing. Um, you'll see it almost every time Judge Death shows up, or the Dark Judges. So we, for the first time, we see his spirit vacate his shattered body. So they have to go and consult with Psy Division. Is this the, the this, first appearance of Psy Division? This is the, in this next page, the first page of the next frog, 
we get the first appearance of Psy Division, which looking back and how big Psy Division has factored in progs from here on out, and the first appearance of Judge Anderson. And it's almost innocuous. Yep. Like, there's no big fanfare. There's no, you know, big headline, big blurb. It's it's just, oh, here's Psy Division, and here's Judge Anderson. And Judge Anderson comes at us like flow from progressive. Yeah, she's definitely not current and she's like bubbly and i would say both def and anderson have a very different uh, personality at this point death was just kind of this monster creature that didn't have a whole lot behind what was going mm-hmm. on but at this point death is kind of like a like a wild man death has a whole different sort of persona oh yeah he's, he's been through and done a whole lot of comedic and sort of horror related things mm-hmm. too but there's there's a lot more to death than just this monster that's here to kill everybody, and there's a whole lot more to Anderson than this uh, this sort of like it was like a like a secretary file clerk, you know? Yeah, she just comes and Dread is inside a vision. They have Death's burnt husk out on the slab, so they call in Anderson to try to make contact with this creature. And what it, she comes in, save your breath, I've already read you, can't hide your guilty secrets from a telepath, you know. And of course, Joe, I have no guilty secrets. To bring Star Trek back into the conversation again, <laughs> and if you don't like Star Trek, I guess you're out of luck. But you know, <laughs> on uh, Next Generation, Deanna Troy's mother mm-hmm. is, a, is a telepath. Yeah. And she always accuses Picard of having dirty thoughts about her. And I kind of thought that's what they were sort of saying. Like, yeah, I, I know Dread, yeah, you know. Like I, kinda, I kind of agree with you because if you look the way that Bolin drew Dredd's face, <laughs> he's a bit taken aback. Yeah. And she does. She comes in like, hey, Dredd, baby. It's like Yeah, this, she's waka waka. Yeah. She's it's, almost like the second banana comic relief for the prog. And um, it's amazing that they, the, the, you know, spoiler alert, the turn that, that Anderson makes in this prog to being this beloved, you know, hero of Mega City, in a way, it, there's not enough prog here to warrant that sort of fanfare it, that she gets in the end yeah i think they they try to redeem that in later prog yeah i think uh, like we said earlier i don't think they knew what they had with judge death and judge anderson and i can only imagine that the public response to this initial printing must have been so positive that yeah. that um pulled the trigger on the return of both yeah but uh yeah she's she shows up the bones are on the slab and she, they want her to make contact with whatever was in this thing via physical contact with its corpse. So she's she's still wisecracking. She's taking off her gloves. And I love this. She's wisecracking. Um, they, she's getting down to business. And Dredd just goes, must she be so flippant? And the other side judges say, yeah, side judges are highly strung. So she's just bubbly and boisterous because it's a nightmare in her head. Sure, yeah. And she's trying to keep the voices quiet. So, what? She she lays hands on, almost religiously, on the the corpse. And death starts to speak. And her. she gets a full feel of how powerful an entity this creature is. And he's, yeah, he speaks through her. She becomes conduit. And he basically sort of lays out the mission statement. We find out in that just brief, you know, possession scene that uh, they're from an alternate dimension and that in their dimension, they determine that all crimes were committed by the living. And so the way to wipe out crime is to wipe out the living. So life becomes a crime. Well, they're not wrong. They're not wrong. Uh, it, I mean, there's there's a sound logic there. It just doesn't work if you're trying to eliminate crime to save people's lives. I don't think that was on their, their board for the day. Well, and here's the thing that was interesting to me is it's not as if this idea that Judge Death has is that far away from what's happening in Mega City because... Literally everything is a crime. Yeah, having eating sugar is a crime. Drinking coffee is a crime. They just took it to what they felt was the logical conclusion. And the world they kind of came from, they were judges. They had a judge system. They're from a parallel universe. They just ratcheted up everything one notch. But let's say, imagine that Mega City One continues on its trajectory three hundred years into the future and doesn't get better, but gets worse. What just what if I've never seen this addressed, but what if 
the dimension that they come from is really just a far distant future. I was actually going to bring that up. Yeah. 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 It's totally plausible that what we will come to know as Dead World is actually the future fate of Mega City One. Because despite the fact that the, the, you know, like the people we saw at the rabbit hatch partying it up and having a good time, you know, do seem to be enjoying their lives to some degree, it's not as if Judge Death teleports into this wonderful society and brings death and destruction. He teleports into a living hell. Yeah. It just so happens that his living hell is a little bit worse. <laughs> Shades of gray. I mean... Yeah, that's the other thing. Is everyone in Dead World dead? Or is everyone in Dead World undead? Because in that case, they really didn't succeed. I took it as the four of them are the only remaining things on Dead World. Like so they, they're just they're they're basically just branching out with yeah, their mission. They're going to judge all life now in the known everything as a crime. But right now we just have death. He's the only uh, representative from, from Dead World that's come across, but we find out that basically uh, his spirit is sort of like a gas in, in that it can't necessarily go through walls. It has to, if something's airtight, yeah, it, it can't, it, it can't needs a, It needs something to pass through. Like you said, it can't pass through physical matter, but if there's like a keyhole, crack in a window, so on and so forth, it can move. And, and we find this out because after, you know, going through this ordeal and having death inhabit her... Anderson's tired. She goes for some rest, but she's followed home by Judge Death. Anderson is such a powerful psychic that just the mere contact with him, with Death, the first time, left his touch on her, and now she's very susceptible to his possession. And he he comes floating outside of her window like the vampire from Salem's yeah. Lot. Let me in. Let me in. And he squeaks through some little. She opens the window just a okay. little bit. He, squ- he squeaks in like a fart. He, do- he he is basically a fart ghost. Like, he looks like a cartoon fart. <laughs> he does. <laughs> I love that. Um, he, he sneaks in and he possesses her again. And taking us to the third prog, which is called The Monster Within, he, he's possessed Anderson and he's now controlling her. And everything moves really quick. It's like, she opens the window, death comes in, she's possessed. We're in the next prog. In the and, morgue. And she's, she's headed to the morgue to retrieve his body. And this is... Really, the only time we ever see this happen because later on, any vessel will do. But for some reason, in this prog, he has to get the original, the original pressing. <laughs> he can't get a reprint. He was a lot pickier. Well, I mean, you we see later on in this character's story sometimes when he can't find like a great body to it, have he has to do. do. And the, <laughs> that's really fun. When that oh, happens. I love it. But uh, what what was also interesting about this that we we find later. Uh, I guess we'll save most of it for the next story, but the process that seems to need to happen to create a body for death yeah. changes based on which prog you're in, but in the early days, it was pretty complicated. Like, he had to have the same body. Yeah. And then the other dark judges need to do certain things. There's a ritual, it. which I kind of like that, but I've I also like got that. questions when we get there. Uh, yeah, same here. So I guess we'll... going through, Continuing on this with this one, uh, Anderson's struggling internally. She's trying to fight death trying to stop him from causing all of this chaos. They're in a car driving with the body, and she she wrecks the car just to get to get death out of her. Yeah, which doesn't work. And no. let's, uh, before we go much further, while she's getting out of the morgue, um, there's one of the attendants, and they're trying to stop her, and death makes Anderson boot this guy out of, what, 20, 30-story window? This judge finds him uh, on the concrete bleeding out. Oh. So... Anderson has killed another employee of the Department of Justice against her will. I'm sure this is still a, a, a cube offense somehow. Yeah, how did Anderson? I guess I guess extenuating circumstances. There are no extenuating circumstances. And how's Anderson still walking the streets? Well, I don't know. Well, we're gonna find out. Right. There's a, there's a pause button there. <laughs> so, yeah, she wrecks the car. Death's original body goes sailing through the windshield. I don't know if her intent was to kill herself. I'm assuming she was trying to make the ultimate sacrifice here. I think she's doing anything she can do to stop Judge Death, and none of it's working. She knows what he's planning, and only she knows at this point. So now she's, she, he's making her walk to his destination, lugging his skeleton. That is still a, it's still all in one piece now. Like I don't, There's no tendons holding it together, so how is this skeleton not just floppy bones? Right. 
I'm applying logic to a uh, prog about a zombie judge from an alternate dimension. Bear with me. And and at that one that wasn't really meant to have any sort of deep, deep yeah, storyline. Yeah, I'm I'm digging way too deep on this. Well, one. that's what we do with everything, <laughs> Judge Dredd. Uh, so they're like, okay, we got to wrap this thing up. Yeah. Let's hurry up and wrap this thing up. Anderson sends a message to Dredd that none of us reading at the time understand, but she says, boing, boing. You mean the miracle spray? The miracle spray, boing. Um, Here it is again, my doc. I don't know what's going on. I really should have researched this. Now it's just grinding my gears. But Dredd understands this message. They start this uh, this sting operation. They're they're ready for, for Judge uh, Death. And somehow they start to realize that, I guess, you need an airtight room. You've got you've to set things up just right so that we can capture the essence of of Judge Death as he farts into the room. <laughs> he does. Uh, and it really kind of like he ends looks, pretty abruptly. Yeah, this is page. totally the um the Universal Monsters wrap up. Yeah. The last so the other side judges locate Anderson. We see that Anderson has put the corpse of Judge Death in this weird machine. He says the dead fluids heal my body. And the dead fluids are pretty constant from here on out. Yeah. Like we hear about them a lot. But this is the first and only time we ever see Judge Death try to repair his original body. And I, I'm assuming this is a rejuvenation chamber. Okay, yeah, that, one, that one makes sense. My, my thought was that they had understood that, okay, this body uh, can be repaired with these machines that they have here. So they're, are they trying to repair that body and give it flesh, and then he jumps into it? I, That's I, what I assumed. Okay, because I, I had that thought, too. I was like, what are the dead fluids? But yeah. then I thought maybe that's just, you know, because in all the other stories, they talk about Dread having, like, skin printed, you know. Yeah. And people having surgeries and they'll, they'll print skin or they'll, they'll rejuvenate their skin. And so I'm just assuming that they don't fully understand what this machine is called, but they know what it does. Okay. So he's trying that makes to fix sense. the body so he can get back in there because he needs muscles. He needs tendons. He needs a cor- corporeal form yeah. to actually. Um, and basically, uh, we, we come to this point where... They're in the machine trying to fix Judge Death up. Everything wraps up really quickly, and we get the uh, finally the payoff to what Boeing is. Yeah, and so it's a super it's a super uh, super a, plastic spray. Substance. A miracle pra- plastic. And uh, it, really, when I read this for the first time, I was like, "Man, that's stupid." <laughs> the, the ending is very abrupt. It's very abrupt, and it's it's a cop out in a way. Well, like we said before, this was probably this week's monster. Yeah. So you know, you got Dread kick doors into where they're they're at. His backup seals the door from the outside, so Judge Death can't escape. Dread blows up the rejuve machine with Dread or Death's body in it. Death tries to escape. He can't do it. He gets back in Anderson and gives Dread a good smack across the chin. Meanwhile, Anderson is screaming to Dredd about the boing. And Dredd hits her with this aerosol can spray, and she is quickly encased in a cocoon of translucent miracle plastic. And with her, Judge Death. Because she is now entombed. It's airtight. He can't get out. And what do they do for Anderson? They shape this miracle plastic into the shape of a glass casket, and they have a little plaque proclaiming and i love this judge anderson a monster dwells within her within us all absolutely but that's it that is the birth of side division the birth of anderson and the birth of judge death it doesn't seem that they knew what they had in this and how important all of this side division anderson judge death would become and it, it has to to at least 50 percent be John Wagner's ideas and creations, but you can't overlook Brian Baldwin's art because oh God, it's so no. so cool. No, and from this prog on, look at like I would dare say that those are two of the most popular characters in all of Dread. Google search 2000 AD and look at what characters come up on their merch easily. Dread, Anderson, Judge Death. To some degree, I would almost say that Death. Is a, even a little more popular than Dread. The image in it, oh to yeah a degree. I mean, look at the Anthrax merch. I have the the Judge Death T-shirt. Don't we all? We should. <laughs> we do. You could send us more Anthrax if you want to. 
Is Anthrax listening? God, I hope so. I don't think so. Oh. No. So, yeah, th- that's just such a quick, you know, intro to the characters. And having read a lot of other Judge Death uh, related storylines, when I went back and read the uh, origin story, I have to say I was disappointed because it just ends in such a cheesy way. You know, if you try to tell somebody this story, you can tell them, you know, judge death and the crime is life. And they're like, yeah, that's that's fucking cool. Until you get to... <laughs> but they seal him in Boeing at the and end. Wrap him up in plastic. And yeah, considering where the character is gone and what they've done with him, it's such an just an auspicious debut. But what a, what a cool idea of having Anderson buried inside of this glass casket with... The monster trapped inside of her head. So she's in hell. Yeah. Even though I do think Judge Death would be kind of fun to hang out with, depending on which version of Judge Death you're hanging out with. He, he w- he's not just a, a rabid monster. I'm sure they had some interesting conversations. I kind of, I think of him a bit of the um, Mark Hamill Joker from Batman the Animated Series. Like, mm-hmm. I can see that voice coming out of him. But he has no qualms about killing people. Yeah. Like, the Joker would set up this big Rube Goldberg device to, and almost kill people, but Judge Death is, like, just knee-deep in the dead. He he really relishes it, especially in the next story we, we see just, you know, even when they're being attacked, his main his main goal is just killing motherfuckers. No, he's right. judging them, sir. Oh, yeah. Judging. True. He's carrying he's out judgment. Carrying out his sentences. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's the, that's the first time we see Dread, Death, and Anderson all in one prog together. And how 2000 AD is it that they introduce these characters that will go on to be heavy hitters, Death and Anderson, and in the same prog they introduce them, they're dead. Yeah. By the last page. But they come back. They do. And, and I will and they're say, going to. it's not like they rebooted and decided they were going to bring them back to life. They didn't say Anderson was dead. No, it's... That is definitely left up to supposition. Um, and that that bleak sort of outlook for the 2000 AD stories that we love, I guess, you know, how much more bleak can you get than I am a, pr- I am a prison for yes. this fucking monster? I conjecture that she is dead because Boeing is airtight. How, how would she survive? Here's if- how she survives. Because we know she comes back in the next prog. Well, they, now we do. You just blew it. Well, Judge Death lives. Shh. Didn't say anything about Judge Anderson, oh, you asked. Well, well, here's how we know that she's not dead. Though. Okay. Because so she and death are one. Yes. And death is a living dead creature. Mm-hmm. So even if she would have been dead, she would have, you know, sort of inherited some of death's undead properties. You think she would have decayed? No. I guess if she was dead inside the Boeing, she would have kind of rotted and wizened. Well, no, it's it's like a, uh, it's like canning fruit. It's the air that kills it. It's the air that really makes it go bad, Johnny. It's the air that made the people on Deadwood go bad, so we, they can't have it anymore. And yeah. they don't. And they don't. So we're going to move on to the next one. Right. Right after this. So with all this talk about death, Johnny, I have a question for you. All right. Do you love your life? Sure you do. Oh, yes. Uh, so, if you love your life, you want to extend that life as long as possible. Sure. And to extend your life as long as possible would really be a waste unless you look good living your life. Well, that's just sound logic. Well, so you don't have to worry about looking like our pal Judge Death. You can check out our friends at Young You Rejuvenation. That's Y-O-U-N-G, Y-U, Rejuvenation. At Young You Rejuvenation, you can live as long as Judge Death, but look as beautiful as Judge Anderson. Oh, you've got me. Young You Rejuvenation parlors have 12 rejuve chambers in one convenient location, which means no waiting for you. I can't wait to wait. And with Young You Rejuvenation's new competitive pricing, you can afford to have two, four, even seven treatments per week. I can't wait to be young again. Well, Johnny, if you want to be young again, all you have to do is go to youngurejuvenation.com and type in the promo code Cursed Earth Radio, and they're going to get your first two Young You Rejuvenation treatments absolutely free. I can't wait to not wait to wait. But wait, there's more. I just told you I can't wait to not wait to wait. 
If you sign up within the next 48 hours using our promo code CursedEarthRadio, Young You Rejuvenation will give you a free suction towel at no extra cost. None of this sounds legal. Well, no one said looking good was easy. So check out Young You Rejuvenation, the only treatment helping you look like you, only younger. I can't wait. So we're back with Judge Death Lives, the, the sequel. The sequel. And far superior. The Judge Deathening. Judge Death 2, Havana Nights. The Electric Boogaloo. I knew that was coming. <laughs> I, I knew you'd say that. Oh, get out. All right. I'm ashamed of what I you just should did. should be. I'm so ashamed of what I just did. Um, so yeah, this was a year and a half after the original Judge Death. Originally in Prague's 224 to 228. From August 8th, 81 to September 5th, 81. Again, written by John Wagner and Alan Grant this time. And art by Brian Boland. And this one marks the first appearance of Fire, Fear, and Mortis. Yes. And a much more fleshed out story. No pun intended. And it's still pretty abrupt. The way that it starts and the way that it ends. Still not really giving the epic treatment to this story. But there's there's more here and there's just enough to get a feel for everything. And we almost start right off sort of with the same visual that we ended the previous yeah. story with. Anderson is now an exhibit, a permanent exhibit at the Justice Department. And, Lucky her. And I guess it's like the White House where people can come and visit and, uh, you know, see all the paintings and see all of the uh, statues for the fallen judges and the previous uh, and Chief the, Justice. And the one we stuck in Boeing. And she's like the centerpiece. So we, we start with a museum tour and all of these citizens are gathered around kind of gazing upon Mega City's fallen angel who has a living monster. death in her head. A monster dwells within her. Yes. As they start to head off on their tour to look at God knows what else, I think they mentioned some bizarre... Uh, I, I, was gonna, I was hoping you were going to stop here because I love it. It's such a little thing, but I love it. It says... Over here, we have the uniform of Judge Hurst, the inventor of the flesh disintegrator. <laughs> he will be remembered. Here's this, this wonderful woman that saved Mega City from this horrible menace. And over here's the statue for a guy that created one of the most terrifying sounding <laughs> torture implements. The flesh disintegrator. Where was that he when will, they were fighting death? He will be remembered. He will be remembered. <laughs> Uh, one of the members of the crowd sneaks behind a curtain and immediately I'm thinking this has to be like a secret, like a secret agent from another city. We don't know who this guy is, but he's hiding out and he waits until the entire exhibit closes to make his move. Honestly, I thought he, when this whole scenario unfolds, I initially thought that he may be grave robbing for Uh. necrophilia. Oh, man. Yeah. You real dark. Well, that, that, it kind of feels like a horror movie starting here. Or, or are you just projecting because in your Frank version... Well, in your version of this prog, she's got red hair and apparently you have a thing for mm, that. I do. Maybe maybe that's what Cool Johnny Cool's subconscious was thinking. Here. Oh, that was very conscious. It was, <laughs> it was a very uh, far cry from, from what he was actually doing. That we and what is he later. actually doing, HMK? Well, he's really there just to free judge... Death. Because that's what you do on a Saturday night in the, mag, the Big Bang. Well, and there, there's some other circumstances that finally make us understand here in a little bit. What happened is Judge Death is let out by this guy. He's then immediately inhabited, and uh, Death makes a run for it after this guy cuts through the Boeing, and then uh, Death sort of ends up controlling this guy to cut through a few uh, security officers. Yeah, and um, after you're done on the street, if you're injured in the line of duty, you either go to the academy or you go, apparently, to give tours to the museum. Because we can clearly see this senior judge has a robotic leg. So he has been injured in the line of duty. And then he gets lasered to death by this guy who has f- just freed Judge Death. Yeah, and, and so Death now has a remote control human. And he wants, of course, to get back to his brothers. And his work. Yeah, well, his, his sentence is not complete. So he takes, death commands this guy, take me to the people that sent you here. We go back to the Justice Hall as they, uh, you know, apparently make a run for it. Dredd is reprimanding the staff members in the wake of some judges being cut in half, trying to, (laughs) you know, solve this case. 
Dred's kind of laying it on this poor schlub for letting in too many visitors. Look, justice doesn't take a holiday. Well, it turns out that there are 4,000 visitors per day in the Grand Hall of Justice. And he miscounted. He miscounted. <laughs> he, he is ordered to put himself under detention. Can you really blame? The, I mean, it's how easy would that be, John, yeah, to miscount by one? One click off on your person counter. But I, I, to some degree, we find out that doesn't even matter because this guy got in by legal means. Yeah, and he hung out. Like, at, he hid. Yeah. After I, I'm sure Dredd would have yelled to the other judge who didn't catch him, but he was conveniently lasered in half. So, so Dredd's just handing out sort of reprimands to people because, well, somebody's going to pay for this until we figure out what's going on. But, I mean, I understand. Somebody just contributed to l- releasing the worst threat Mega City 1 has ever seen up yeah. until this point. Um, anyways, we go back to uh, Judge Death and his newly claimed vessel... This poor motherfucker lives in uh, Billy Carter block. <laughs> Turns out he's not a super criminal. He's not a spy. He's not a grave robber. <clears throat> he was uh, being extorted. Yeah, he's just a, a guy that has psychic potential. And his wife was being held captive. And they, his wife's captors made him go free death. Yeah. And who are his wife's captors, HMK? Our favorites. Judges Fire, Fear, and Mortis. Oh, good. Death has buddies. And immediately, I think we're, we're coming up on some of the absolute pinnacle artwork. Oh, yeah. Some of the best. And when we first see the, the three other dark judges, Fear, Fire, and Mortis, standing there together with the... Oh, and we... By the way, they didn't give him his wife back. They killed her. Oh, yeah. They yeah. killed her while he was gone. So yeah. he comes back to find his wife dead, these three horrible monsters standing there... And basically saying, well, don't worry, because we just went ahead and gave her her sentence anyways. And by the way, your sentence, you know, it's coming too. Yeah. And what is his sentence? Well, it's death. Yeah. I mean, he will be the new vessel, permanent vessel, for the spirit of death. His sentence is literally death and figuratively death. Mm-hmm. But let's just, let's take like a two second break here and just talk about the designs of these dark oh. judges. From this artist. I truly believe this is Brian Bolland's best work. And he's done a lot of cool shit. Oh, yeah. But Judge Fear has the bear trap shoulder pads. Anytime you see a creature with bear trap shoulder pads. <laughs> man trap. Man trap. That's true. Yes, that's right. He has Bears man, were last week. Man trap shoulder pads. Bears are dangerous, uh, as we find out in later uh, progs. <laughs> um, especially roe bears. Yes. But uh, Fear has these these man trap shoulder pads. Yes, you're right. And this, uh, this amazing Jun helmet from the Beastmaster. Yes. Concealing who knows what. This... Otherworldly terror, almost elder god. He is he is Lovecraftian to the core, and that's why he's my favorite. I lo- honestly, and we and you and I have talked about this of the four dark judges. Death is the least interesting. Maybe it's just because he's over. He's a little overdone at this point. And we, um, you and I, and readers who have been reading for a while, know who death is and exactly. know his origins. And once you show the origin of what you're afraid of, you're no longer afraid of it. It becomes less interesting. And I will say, especially with Hi. Judge Death's origins, I, it's a completely 2080 origin. It is. It's, it's Why would it be not anything but? It's fucking Daffy. <laughs> it's a, that's the only way to put it. It's a fucking weird, Daffy, goofy origin. Um, and I accept it and I love it for what it is, but... It's not really what I hoped for. Or what We're I not going to tell our listeners. Yeah, if you're interested, go digging. You also have Judge Fire, who's Ghost Rider without the leather. Uh, but and he's he got a, a trident. trident. Yeah, he's your long range support, as yeah. you said the other day. Yeah, he is. He is this the little brother of the group, I think, because Fire or Fear, Mortis, and Death are definitely the older cool kids, and Fire's just happy to be helping. Mortis is the most heavy metal motherfucker of the bunch. Oh, he's a black album cover in a judge uniform. He's, he is black metal to the core. And his power set is very similar to Death. Well, not. I mean, we talked about this at length uh, a couple nights ago. Mortis's power set is fetid. He has a fetid touch. He can rot you away and turn you into a corpse. Death shoves his hand into you and squeezes. It just depends on how you would like to die. Yeah. Or or death will karate chop you through the shoulder. <laughs> I love karate chop action. Uh, yeah, it's it's a great it's a great image. But uh, the three dark judges standing before this poor man holding his dead wife. 
cold, staring forward, not not really even paying attention to this guy because they have bigger plans. They have a mission to carry out, and, and that mission is judgment. And death needs a body. He needs a, a physical form to do his work. So what happens? We go to uh, Fear and Loathing in Billy Carter Block. Um, and what what we start to see is the process, the ritual that has to happen to create death. I love this. Yeah, I love the fact that there's a big, drawn-out, involved ritual that, in, that includes all the Dark Judges. Yeah, yeah, it's like everybody needs to... And, I, and we don't see this later. As the story of Judge Death continues, we see him brought back several times, but this is the only time where it's like, they take this poor man... And first, you got to throw a little a little Judge Mortis action in there. So Mortis grabs him, and he immediately just starts to decay. And it's horrific, this poor man. And he you, basically turns into Eddie from Iron Maiden. Which, yeah, actually, what it's not a bad fate, I guess. No. Uh, and you get this great panel up at the top. It's his face progressively turning into this Judge Death grin. But it's the background is Mortis's face, and, or his eyes. And we, we should point out that Mortis's head is a giant cow skull. Oh, yeah. He is the pale horse. Yeah, there's there are definite uh, four horsemen of the apocalypse nods with these guys. Yeah. And before I knew really what, what they were about, I thought that they were just 2080s four horsemen of the... Like, I thought they were literally the four horsemen. Oh, okay. And that was just 2080s version. Uh, I just kind of assumed that when I saw them. Well, they definitely have the traits of. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 it's a very similar. Their mission is a little bit different. But I guess either way, it brings about the end. So, um, and it's just the most amazing few panels uh, as we go through and just see this transformation. I like that Fire's just happy to be here. And he's, <laughs> he is in here. Enter death. Fill this soulless carcass. Yeah, and I just, in the back of my head, he's going over his lines before death gets back. He's got to get, he's got to nail this. He's just got to do that. It just says, he needs to say no, that one thing. I've got to get the inflection right. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to emote. <laughs> Fire's got some good, he's got some good panels in he this got, thing. Man. He does, and his character really develops later on. Because uh, of the four, he's the least developed in this story. Yeah, he, he has one of my favorite moments in the entire in the entire storyline, though. So when we get there, I'll, I'll just... It's nothing big, but... Um, so they, they prepare the body and they start the transformation. As this is going on, we take a, a step back to the Justice Department and we find out Judge Dredd is now on the case, as always. He's looking for death and his host. So he's he's got the whole Justice Department figuring out who these visitors were, who were these people that went through the, the uh, Judge Anderson Museum... He's got names. He's got apartment numbers. And he finds a man named Mitson. I'm assuming that's his uh, his first name. And given how 2080 operates. Yeah. Because what was the guy that we Barreled. had? Barreled. <laughs> Barreled. So Mitson <laughs> is possibly the guy's first name. Who knows? Um, and uh, he, like you said, he's known to have telepathic abilities. So Dredd heads off to see if they can you know, intercept before Mit- something terrible happens to Mitson. Too and mate. also probably to arrest Mitson. Yeah. So, so while Dredd's doing that, the whole the ritual is happening. Uh, I'm assuming they've got some cool doom metal playing. This this kind of ritual can't happen without a soundtrack. Just um, not possible. Right. Um, I love that you see the eyes flicker open in the newly christened corpse of Dredd or Death. But I also don't like it, and I'll tell you why. Because behind that grill on his helmet. I don't want to know what's back there. It's Bolin beautifully renders these desiccated eyes and a shell of a head. But I want, it's almost like Judge Fear. I don't want to ever see what's behind that visor. I want the what if. I want, because in my mind, from the, from like the upper lip up, it's just a horror show of terrifying nothingness. I, I definitely get that, but I kind of like that panel because it reminds me of Return of the Living Dead. Yeah, all. Oh, That's you, the, yeah. do you want a party? Yeah, moment. yeah, yeah. And they brought him clothes. They brought him clothes. Well, he's very picky about that. <laughs> we find out later he's and very picky about it. Here's that. Fire, again, with his high English. Death lives, bring his garb of office. And, and what I like about it is also when, as soon as Death wakes up, he's basically like, Yo, this entire dimension is against us, brothers. Yeah, he fills them. them in. Like, everybody's alive here. Everyone's well. I saw people dancing, and we've got to start judging right now. But they're pretty tactical about it. Yeah, they brought a side shield. 
They did, and they it's big enough to contain an entire block. So they're they're trying to take down S- Billy Carter block. Seventy thousand people. Yeah, and and basically they're they're all now trapped in this size shield, and the dark judges are just going to go floor to floor, murdering every person mm-hmm. because if you're alive, you're guilty, and you've already been judged. So. Um, Basically, we get uh, a few great <laughs> panels of the Dark Judges murdering people. And uh, I, I think uh, it was on this little quick run here that we see uh, the first display of Fear's power. Yeah. Where all we know is that he swings open the the shield on his on his helmet and stares at someone. And they see something, but we don't see what it is. And it immediately drives them mad. Yeah, and I... I... Have always assumed that it's subjective. Yes. Everybody sees their own endless horror inside that helmet. So, so here's a question for you: If fear opened the helmet and stared at you, what would you see? A lack of pumpkin spice. <laughs> <laughs> I would see a shark. A shark? Just I would see a big shark. Clampy head. jaws. Uh, the the other thing that I have always imagined when I think of Judge Fear mm. and what would be in that mask is Large Marge. From Pee Wee's uh, Big Adventure, I yeah. got you. That it would be, be the Large Marge face, blah, with the bug out eyes. Yes. And some artists have tried to render it. There's always like tendrils and eyeballs. Oh, and there's there's a good one. There's a great shot of the eyeballs. I, I uh, it must be in Necropolis. Yeah, yeah. But it's that old like when H.P. Lovecraft. You never show Cthulhu. I, you sh- you show you can show people going mad at the sight of Cthulhu. Yeah. But you do not show the Eldritch Horror. I, I do love to see every artist's take on it, though. Uh, because if I'm reading it, and I, it's maybe, to me, what that person would see. Yeah. Maybe we're seeing what that person would see, but we would see something different. When I saw the eyeballs, uh, I thought about... I always go back to Lovecraft when I think of Judge Fear. And I think of uh, a story where a man gazes into a crystal and... Um, something looks back. Mm -hmm. And the terrifying thought is that something in another dimension saw him. So to to me, I've also thought before, is Judge Fear just kind of full of many, many creatures? Like if if I were to like imagine the voice of Judge Fear, maybe it's multiple voices like Legion. That that would be good. Um, I've always kind of assumed that Fear is just a void that in which dwells all these terrible things. Yes. He has become exactly. fear itself. The last page is, um, it's the best thing that Brian Bolland has ever done. It's a big, the two, big yeah. two-page spread. If you Google Judge Death, this is the first thing that you're going to find. And it's it's iconic. I really wish that I had a print of this. It is flat out one of the best pieces of in all of 2080. And it's the four dark judges... Each one is standing there, you know, almost full length, and you you have an example below them of what one of their victims would look like. So you have fire and a man on on fire. You have fear and someone who looks like he was scared to death. Mortis with some rotting corpses and death with some just good old classic dead guys. Fear has his uh, his shield open, but he, he's obscuring it with his hands. And you get to see the bevy of traps that he has under. The cloak, and he's got a shrunken head. There's a lock. There's some smaller traps, and you can kind, at least in mine, you can kind of see beady little eyes yeah. in that in that shadow. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, um, I I really need to get a print of this and framed on my wall because it is one of the most iconic pieces to come out of 2000 AD. And Balin's, uh dark judges are probably the the best. Dark Judges. I don't, I don't know that anyone's done... I really thoroughly enjoyed The Fall of Dead World. Their take on it. A whole different take, but yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I like I like Carlos's Dark Judges as well. When yeah, I, well, Necropolis. When I think of of Dark Judges, I tend to think of Bollins. Oh, yeah. But because I'm so in love with Necropolis, those are the Dark Judges that I also enjoy. But these are much more detailed. And I think that's what makes them a bit more terrifying if they're anatomically correct but also horrendous yeah dark judges are his best work and that is specifically to me the best single thing that he's ever drawn yeah it's it's phenomenal i never get tired of looking at it just the detail and it how he rendered everything perfectly and it's just such a good image 
So we go to the next issue, and the dark judges are still wreaking havoc in Billy Carter block. You know, the Justice Department's trying their best to get in, but they're they're kept out by this force field. They're trying to come up with ways we can tunnel underneath, but the force field even goes through the ground. It goes into the sewers, and we get more gory action. They're killing women in wheelchairs. They <laughs> kill an old man in the shower. That's my... This is... You get to see a little bit of the... The gallows humor that will come out of death yeah. later. He says, I have come to cleanse you. And he, he kills this guy in the shower. I, I Gleefully. I kind of wish it had been Judge Fire that killed the man in the shower. Because I, I'd like to know if Fire you know, would have pulled back the shower and then had to just close it. Recoil. And say, like, I'll, I'll call someone else. That, yeah, that would have been great, actually. But what happens underneath in that, on that same page is my favorite Judge Fire moment. Because he just runs up and gives this poor man a hug. You cannot run from justice. He grabs it. He just hugs a guy to death because he's on fire. Well, yeah, he is fire. And... Fire tends to get shoved in the in the back seat of the car all the time. But he's got some cool moments, Johnny. You, you can't no, I, I fire like, out. No, no. I don't not like fire. But of the four, he is definitely the little cousin tagging along. He is. I mean, but he's your long-range support. Well, yeah. Uh, but... You know, I, th- I thought fire had a cool moment when you when you bear hug somebody to death while on fire, while on fire, yeah. So yeah, they're 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 killing everybody, and the Justice Department has to find a way in, and our hero of this issue shows up, Anderson, back Shoot. at it, and even Dredd says, "Shouldn't you be resting?" And Anderson says, "It'll keep," and she lets on that in the year and a half that she was in in the Boeing with death in her head, that she picked up some stuff from death. She has more understanding of him and how they operate and what they're about. And you you really find out throughout this entire storyline that she's linked to death and all of the Dark Judges now. Because death and his his brothers have a link and death and Anderson have a link. So they they're sensing each other. Like when she comes on the scene and they and when she and Dredd go through the shield, you find that the, the Dark Judge has become acutely aware of that. Death is aware that she has penetrated the shield. And he panics, almost. Yeah. And and they're busy. The Dark Judges are busy fighting against the city defense boys. Like, you know, the little sort of National Guard. Not as tough as the Judges, but they're, they're giving it their all. And completely just being decimated by the Dark Judges. There needs to be a memorial statue to the massacre of Peanut Park. <laughs> yeah. And Billy Carter Block. Billy Carter Block had it rough this day. And I like how none of them drop character. Uh, Death alerts them that Anderson has penetrated the shield. And she's bringing, she's bringing Dread with her. Another judge. She's, yeah, uh, they, don't, they don't know him yet. <laughs> right, right. She's, but she's using all of her power to, to sort of... She and Dread are walking through, but they can't get anyone else through. It's, no. it's only those two. They're going to have to go through and shut down this force shield. And they, I love the, still the commitment to character... And death blurts out, I stay to continue judgment. And, and, then, and uh, fear goes off to make sure that... I go way. to guard the shield. And here comes fire. I go to deal with the intruders. That's my fire voice. Oh, I fire. go to deal with the intruders. That's yeah. how he sounds in my head. And Mortis, what, what's he doing? He's just killing people. He's just off. <laughs> like, he found some, a brand new shiny. And he's just loving it. Uh, I, I think I would have sent Judge Fire to take care of the shield. That's just me. Well, yeah, because he can create a perimeter around it, but yeah. he goes to try to stop Dredd and Anderson getting in. And Dredd remembers that Boeing worked on death, so he hurls a can of Boeing at fire. Oh, God. It's like throwing an aerosol can at a campfire. It's exactly that, because it just explodes and nothing happens. Uh, but And I thought this was kind of lame. Again, you know, contributing to the plight of our boy Judge Fire and his, like, sort of little brother backseat Dark Judge thing... They kill him the same way that they took out the Cenobites in Hellraiser. Well, they don't kill him. They just well, take him down. They, they take him down. In the they same Jack way. Burton him. <laughs> the same, but you know, at the end of Big Trouble in Little China, I do. Jack he Burton's him. He Jack Burton himself. I mean, they Jack Burton him. But but it's like it's like you know, okay, they they try to throw the boing at him, explodes. So Dredd shoots some concrete, you know, ceiling whatever. Uh, support beams, and they crash down on fire, and he's pinned. But that's totally how they took out the Cenobites. I'm not saying they ripped it off. I'm just saying no. it's a lame way 
to to take out. Yeah, so. it's it's we're getting to the Universal Monsters portion of the prog where we've got to we're we're wrapping it up. Yeah, we can wrap it up. But I mean, and that's the thing. I guess you know they're not killing him. They're just they're they're yeah. He's not dead. He's they're just buried. detaining him. Yeah, but I kind of wish there would have been a little bit more than that for our our friend Fire. No, I totally agree. I mean, the, the the workaround was to drop concrete on him. I feel like Fire is an underdog to an extent. Oh, he's totally an underdog. I I just feel like I need to take up for him, but. <laughs> So we've dropped concrete on fire. We've we've taken him out of the equation. Anderson and Dredd are still on the move to this shield generator, and Death knows it. Death feels it. Um, so he knows they're going up to the apartment where the the psi shield generator is. But it doesn't stop Death and Mortis from doing what Death and Mortis do. They're still judging the guilty in Peanut Park, just stacking them up like corkwood. Do you get the sense that uh, Death and Mortis are like? The closest of the two. They hang out a lot. They seem like it. Those power sets are very similar. Fear yeah. definitely seems like the loner. And Judge Fire is Judge Fire. Well, it's hard to it's hard to really get close to fear when you can't really look the guy in the eyes. Well, yeah. No, depending or on several the eyes. <laughs> so we, get, we were coming up on probably the most famous Judge Dredd panel ever. Easily. You think? The most iconic moment of this story and one of the most iconic mo- moments of Judge Dredd. Yeah. Everybody has seen this, even though they might not have context for what it is. You have seen, more than likely, you have seen this panel. And it's and it's Dredd and Anderson finding the shield and getting into it with fire, or with, uh, and it's Dredd and Anderson finding the shield, getting into it with fear. He throws a man trap at him, snags Anderson. Man trap, copyright, dead world. And immediately goes for Dredd, grabs Dredd's helmet and face, and says his famous line... Gaze into the face of fear. And the next panel, and it's it's great because as you like turn the page, if, if you're reading digitally, Johnny, yes. see, I don't know what's coming. Okay. Next. And then I turn the page and you have Dread punching through Clean Judge Fear's through. head. He's punching into the shield and out the back and Dread says, Gaze into the fist of Dread." Oh, yeah, that was good. <laughs> But uh, and so, that, that you're essentially realizing right then and there that even if Dread does have some sort of fear of something, he will punch it right through his fucking face. Yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. Um, whatever whatever it is that Dread is afraid of, he saw it and he confronted it and he went through it. And that's a good way to live your life, guys and gals. Uh, face your fears and punch right through its fucking face out the back of its dumb helmet. Because I don't believe that they're trying to tell us that Dread has no fear. But Dread can face his fear and own his fear. That's what 15 years in the Academy will do for you. I like um, what you did there. So um, she she starts... Uh, Anderson, even though she's... Uh, Still man-trapped. She's man-trapped, but she uh, manages to shoot some incendiaries at uh, Judge Fear. So we see his corpse just destroyed, and he escapes as a fart ghost. He, <laughs> he farts it out and rolls <laughs> off, yeah. <laughs> So, so now we're realizing that, that all of these guys, at some point, if you can get rid of the body, I don't know how fire works like that. I know he can be a fart ghost too, but if you can get rid of the body, you can get him on the run. Yeah. Without a, a physical form, they can't do nearly as much damage. So you can keep them on the run by just blowing them up. And that's, that ends out that prog, and we, we head on to Death's Dark Dominion. And uh, this is I, I, really where, where everything starts to wrap up finally. Uh, Dread manages to shut down the shield uh, generator thing. I'm going to Star Wars territory now. Dread manages to shut down the shield, and uh, they start bringing through assault, assault squads. Have, like He just tells them to hit Billy Carter with everything you've got. They throw H wagons. I love this panel of this judge with a bazooka just lighting Mortis and Death up. It's, it's all out chaos, but then we find out, well, we see Fear's fart ghost hitch a ride with Judge Death. Right, so now Fear's Take inside me. of... He's inside of Death's uh, head, and and they just run the fuck away. Yeah, they've got... We find out that they have these orbs that let them teleport between dimensions. So, uh, Death and Mortis are out. Fire's up again. He bugs out. But Anderson can sense them. And then they find on Fear's body his orb. So what do Dread and Anderson do? Oh, they're going in. Oh, the only logical thing at this point. Let's go to wherever these things are from. Dread, Dread is not the kind of character that is going to wait 
for something to go gather power and then come back for another attack. He wants to he wants to go hit him at the heart of their uh, of their lair, like he did in Oz. Yep. He's going straight in. If he had a nuke, I'm sure he would be dropping huh. it. Um, and so they head into the death dimension. And this is the first time we see Dead World, and it is, it's a Slayer album cover. It, it's uh, it, they have a castle, and the uh, the draw the, the the door to this castle is a giant spider. I love it. Um, they're whoever their interior and exterior decorator is in Dead World. I, I like. What I'm guessing doing. it's Fear. You think it's fear? He's got a he's okay. got a flair for the dramatic. I he, love him. I guess you're right. He does look like a thespian in he's his got, cape. He's got a co- cape. He's got a gimmick. And as soon as uh, Anderson gets to Dead World, she's hit with a, just a barrage of psychic energy. Just people crying out. They killed us all. They killed everyone. Just a wall of noise. And as we as we discussed in the uh, when we talked about the short progs. Um, She's very sensitive to souls that have not been able to move on, souls that haven't been avenged, and so they're they're just all hitting her at once. And now we're facing the dark judges on the steps of Castle Grayskull, which is yeah. interesting <laughs> because it was a spider. Now the drawbridge, door, whatever it is, is a giant uh, Justice Eagle that kind of looks like a vulture. Maybe it just changes. If it changes to be whatever you want it to be, then it's fear's design for sure. Yeah, and I I love they they built a statue. I don't know if they built it or they had somebody else build it, but there's a monument of death judging somebody, and it says here marks the spot where the last human was given justice. And of course, it was it was wonder, death that took him out. I wonder if there's a tour. <laughs> Who would tour it? Death. He's that kind of egomaniac. That's true. Yeah, and you know, you know that Fire would be the tour guy. Oh, he makes Fire give him that tour every day. Hey, but Fire gets another cool moment because he does. Dredd and Anderson try to unload with weapons, and uh, Fire throws his trident and manages to pierce the shoulder armor of Dredd. Takes out Dredd for the rest of the the proceedings. Melts his gun. And what happens? Oh, God, these panels. Oh, oh they're so good. So Anderson is now left to deal with the Dark Judges. And Death tells her that even on your world, my mind was too strong for your puny psychic power. And I, we assume that the Dark Judges are now trying to crush her mind. Um, we do see uh, fear with the, the gate open. So you see Boland's take on it where it's just it's a misfit song. <laughs> Yeah, it's the eyes. It's yeah, the eyeballs. I, I, I like the eyeballs. And they, they drive Anderson. They're breaking her down. They drive her down to the ground. And the ground is nothing but the bones of the judged. And there, there's a really... The final panel on that page is uh, Anderson holding all these bones. And there's like a locket with two lovers. You know, it's just this tragic... She's... Everything. The ground is just full of, of horrible, horrible memories and trauma. And all of that power starts to flow... Through Anderson. Screaming for vengeance, if you will. Screaming for the judges to be judged. And they all, of course, judge them as guilty and sentence them to death. And it's just a little bit abstract at this point. that Because all the dark judges just melt down. And fun fact, the background of this panel of the uh, dark judges melting, that is the background that Anthrax used for the Judge Death t-shirt. Oh yeah? Yep. Huh. That's awesome. Took me years to figure out what that was. (laughs) But yeah, they um, Anderson, as I assume, just pulps them psychically. They are just ashen and no fart ghosts. So we are led to believe that that's it. We're done. Well, Anderson says, it's over, Dredd. They'll never trouble us again. Wrong. No, so wrong. And so very, very wrong. You know, was it, was it that... And that's the end. Yeah. And then Anderson says... That she's going to put him for that sick leave that she was talking about. And Dredd says, after this, I just may join you. So, I mean, Joe's going to take a day off. I feel like there are a few that end like that. <laughs> Where somebody's putting in for sick leave and... They've been through some stuff. Yeah. And I think at this point, I get the feeling with the way they wrapped it up that Wagner and Grant said, all right, these were popular characters. Let's bring them back one more time. Uh-huh. But that's it. Nope. But as you and I know, and most, if you've been reading out there, you know that this is just the beginning. So many more times... 
And, and not only in Judge Dredd uh, magazine and 2000 AD magazine, but also in Anderson Side Division. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe even more prominently uh, do we see uh, Judge Death. And the introduction of these characters cannot even prepare you for the greatness that is things like the eventual team up, even if it was really short, <laughs> of Judge Death, Mean Angel, and Judge Dredd as their own little motorcycle gang. Yeah, that happened. Oh, um, it they, goes so many places. They, they they go to a little bit of a, uh, uh, the the dark judges on a spaceship, and the and the actual judges are running around like Ghostbusters, trapping them. They show up. Uh, a few of them show up in uh, Day of Chaos. There's just there's so much more to these characters and their stories that we get to see because they were introduced here. And I'm sure that was fan outcry. People wanted the the judges. They're so iconic. They're even at that point, just that panel with all four dark judges that Bolin and Bolin's amazing art. I think that panel solidified them. Yeah. Uh, The story is great. The characters are great, but I think it was that image that solidified them with fans. Yeah. And, and I think, we it's rare that you see something like that where it's so powerful that it's the Boba Fett effect. Yeah, enough people think it's awesome that they they want it back and it, it creates that the, the the prophecy is fulfilled and they get to come back. I think we have something like that in 2080 currently, and that's Judge Pin. Mm-hmm. Um, that character to me has the same. Whatever it is that makes a character cool and interesting, it has the same thing. And God, I hope at some point Judge Pin dies and becomes a dark judge. Oh, wouldn't that she, be something? She should be. So many others have become dark judges. And My, um, the Joker? He was a dark judge. He was a cool-looking, fantastic-looking dark judge. Um, IDW, when they're retelling um, of the Judge Death story, they told their own version of it. And the dark judges have legions of dark judges, which is really interesting. They went Hellraiser three. Yeah, they were creating their own Cenobites. And it has John Bush too. Yeah, <laughs> everything can't be perfect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you've also had you know Judge Kraken was a dark judge. Yeah, uh, Nick Percival worked on. Uh, they have Judge Whisper, who's a uh, I believe a side judge. Yeah, and so yeah, we know there's there are more dark judges. But uh, these guys are the ones who have endured. Uh, they're the they're the Beatles of the Dark Judges. You know they're, you know, every there many have come and gone, but Fire, Fear, Mortis, and Death are the cornerstones. And if you want to find out more about the Dark Judges, I'm, stay tuned because I'm sure we're going to be doing Necropolis soon. We both want to do Dead World. Dead World is great. You get um, a lot of backstory um, on the fall of Dead World on the rise of the four dark judges and their genesis. And that's super interesting. Um, Fear is really good in that one. I really, really enjoy Fear. Fire's okay. (laughs) He's going to get his day, man, let me tell you. One of these days. So, all right. That uh, brings us to a close here for the review of two of probably the most important uh, issues, or two of the most important storylines in dread if not for the specific story content but for the creation of these characters that have endured on for a very long time definitely and uh such impactful prods that are also so very very short yeah considering oz considering um apocalypse war considering cursed earth necropolis they are so these introductions are so very short and there's a balance because i when i read something like apocalypse war or Oz, I feel like it could be pared down. When I read this, I feel like it maybe could be uh, extended a little bit. But then again, I feel like we got the gist of everything. Imagine had they added two more progs and stretched out the carnage and the battle. Would it, would it have been any better? Yeah, it uh, could have, we might not be here. That fans may have been like, that's enough. I think these two gave us enough to where we were hooked and we wanted more. And that's how you should always leave it. Like even more song. Did you say that last week? Like a Ramon song? Is that yeah. It? Yeah. So there you I'm go. I'm pretty good sometimes. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we got for today. All right. I'm Cool Johnny Cool. Heavy Metal Kid. We'll see you next time on Cursed Earth Radio. Keep listening, creeps. <laughs>